Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the 47th video in our series on building a chess engine from scratch in the Java programming language. Our focus has been on our basic AI, which is the Minimax algorithm. Uh, in the last video, I covered the min and max methods. Um, <clears throat> Someone in the comments section of the last video mentioned that I made a minor error here in my copy and paste. So min should be calling max and max should be calling calling min. So here we can see min calls the max method and max calls the max method. That's not right. We need to call the min method, right? So again, this has to these methods are what we would call co-recursive. Right, so in a recursive method, you have a function that would call itself, right? And everybody has seen uh, the example of something like factorial, where if you were to take the factorial of a number, you could write a program uh, with a function that uh, calls itself to, to um, uh, calculate the factorial of a number. Um, and you know, in in this example of Minimax, uh, you don't have the function calling itself you have a function that calls another function that calls back to the original function. So the methods are co-recursive. Um, <clears throat> so I've implemented the min and the max method and that really, uh, looking at our diagram here at Minimax, what that does is, uh, just as a reminder, you know, here in our diagram, there's the uh, maximizing player and a minimizing player. In this example, let's pretend as though the circles are the maximizing player, white, and the squares are the minimizing player, black. So, um, right, so at each level that you propagate back, you're going from, say, max to min, from min to max, max to min. And that's really, um, you know, encapsulated here in this co recursive algorithm, right? At each level, you, um, what you're doing is you're enumerating all of the opponent's legal moves, and then you are um, looking at the board from their. Uh, from their position and you use this depth variable to determine when you stop that process right so um, it would be like I move you move I move you move and then we, we have to stop that at some point because um, you know in a game like chess the game tree is so large you can't enumerate all the possible states so typically um, you know what we would see is you would stop after eight or ten uh, plies, that's what we call them, each, each is steps, right? Uh, we would call apply. Um, you would then stop, evaluate the boards, and then con and then you would proceed to propagating the scores up the tree. Okay? So we have the min method defined, we have the max method defined. Um, we're going to implement in this video the execute method, and then the, and in the next video we will uh, implement the board evaluator. Remember that board evaluator is what we will be using to score the boards uh, once we reach the leaf nodes of our tree. Uh, so here you would first go all the way down and you would at the leaf node, depending on the depth variable that you pass in, then you would use that to say it's now it's time to score the board using our evaluation function and then the scores would get propagated back up. Okay? So let's come here to the execute method and um, so here's how I want to do this, right? Uh, there's going to be some extra stuff in here that will need to be explained in a minute. So I'm going to start by saying final long start time because we want to time how long it takes to execute this uh, function. That's really important in the game of chess, right? We want to know how long does it take for us to think about and come up with an answer. So we're going to uh, enter the method and we're going to call system.currentTimeMillies, which is just captures the current moment. Um, in milliseconds, and then we're going to declare move best move equals null. We don't know what the best move is yet, and we're going to say int highest scene value is equal to integer dot min. Again, this is basically saying like, you know, this is giving it the highest value that you've seen so far. We're giving it a really, really um, negative number. Right, a large negative number, if you will, uh, which means that uh, you know normal values that we'll see will immediately then sort you know come in and replace that number. Um, so int lowest, oops, excuse me, int lowest scene value is equal to integer 
dot max value, right? And int oops, current value, and we don't need to initialize that yet. So we'll have a little print statement that says board board dot current player. So it'll print out the current player, and then it'll say thinking with death equals death. There we go. Just a little print statement. And uh, so let's say int num moves is equal to board dot current player dot get legal move size for final move move in the board's current player's legal moves. Then what we'll say is final move transition transition is equal to board dot current players make move we want the player to make the move and if the move transition is done we were able to successfully make that move then what we're going to say is current value is equal to this is the interesting part so we'll say board dot current player dot get alliance if it's white then we're gonna call min on move trans I'll explain this in a second get transition board and depth minus one otherwise max move transition get transition board depth minus one right and so here what we're saying is it doesn't matter who the first player is make that move make the for current players move and if it's done then um, okay now after you've made that after you've made that move if the current player is white, then you want to call the, um, you want to call the, so what we're saying here is that if the current board that you came from, if, if the board that you came from the current player was white, then your next move is going to be a minimizing move, right? That means black's going to move. You're going to become the minimizer, right? Ma white is the maximizing player. Black is the minimizing player. So what we're saying is after we have come in here and we've executed our move, we're now going to begin the recursion chain, the co-recursive re recursion chain and to do that we need to know which which method we need to call min or max right so we just use uh, this sort of conditional where we say the board's current players alliance was white and now we want to go into min otherwise max and you'll notice one thing that's a little tricky is that the board um, we're looking at the current board and that but notice that we pass to the to the min or max method, we pass the transition board from the move transition. That's really important, right? We want to um, we want to use the board that we've transitioned to as our starting point for uh, min and max, and that's going to continue, right? So if you'll notice when we come down to min, after we make our move, right? We come in here and we say, were we successful in executing that move? We were. Now, we know we're the minimizing player, so we don't need any question mark colon business. We can directly say call max and call it on the move transitions transition board. Okay, hopefully that makes sense.
so now, now we can. Uh, that's the that's really the key. I think if you get that portion of it, then uh, you you're in good shape. So the next important step is to say if the board's current player get alliance is white, then else if board.current player get alliance is black. So what we want to do here is we want to say, so if you're white and the current value is greater than or equal to the highest seen value, then we want to say the highest seen value is now going to be equal to the current value and best move is equal to that move that you've seen. Otherwise, lowest seen value is equal to current value and best move is equal to move. Right? That's the heart of it. That right there is, and we'll make some enhancements to this, but uh, you know, obviously, that right there is the, uh, so what we're going to say after we do all that is we're going to say final long execution time is equal to system dot current time millis minus the start time that we calculated on entering this method. And after all that, we're going to say return best move. So there's definitely going to be some enhancements that we're going to make to this, but I wanted to outline the basic structure here. Um, so let's see. Why is it saying this is never assigned but never accessed? Uh, oh, right here we need to say um, and current value is less than or equal to lowest seen value. All right, so here what we're saying is this. Remember, we declared these variables highest seen value and lowest seen value. This is just to track if you're white, the highest seen score, or if you're black, the lowest seen score, right? So what we're saying is, coming into this method, we don't know who calls it, white or black, right? So we have to just execute the first move and go, oh, was it white that was executing? Then initiate the co-recursive routine with min. So yeah, that's the basic gist of the algorithm. If you look in my GitHub rep repository, you'll see some additional code in this class, really that's related to uh, tracking how many boards were evaluated and uh, just more statistical information. Um, I don't want to cover that because I don't want, I just really want to cover the basic algorithm. Uh, get, you can give you guys a good sense of how the basic algorithm for Minimax works, which is, it really is an elegant and neat algorithm to learn. Um, uh, you know, and I, I think it's uh, just very interesting. So, in the next video, what we're going to cover is the board evaluation and some of these things like that I've commented out here were like, what do you do if you run into checkmate uh, before, you know, depth is equal to zero. Uh, so, um, that's what we'll cover in the next video. Uh, again, please do uh, rate, comment, and uh, subscribe, and thanks for uh, watching the series.